Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. This video will guide you through the setup and installation of Nokia Engage and Engage 2.0 games on your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus using the EKA 2L1 emulator. This might be a long one, so strap in and check the description for links and timestamps. Getting this going isn't hard, but it does take some time, effort, and a little bit of jumping around. First, I'll give you some background on the Engage console and 2.0 service. There are two different things we refer to when we talk about Engage. The ill-fated, oft-misunderstood and totally ahead of its time 2003 phone console combo from Nokia, which came in two models, the original and the smaller refined Engage QD. The Engage device had an interesting roster of games which ranged from awful to amazing, with killer apps like Pathway to Glory, a gritty World War II tactical game, and even a 3D open world Elder Scrolls game called Shadow Key. The Engage was actually revolutionary in many ways and far ahead of its time. It had online multiplayer, live streaming, video clips, voice chat, and even MMORPGs, all in your pocket, on your phone, and in 2003. Unfortunately, as much as I love the Engage now, the hardware itself is and always was pretty abysmal. It's clunky, slow, has terrible battery life, and a horrendously bad screen. The second Engage we talk about is Engage 2.0, which was a software platform for games on several Nokia Symbian devices. Famous phones featuring the 2.0 platform with the Express Music 5320, the E5, and the legendary N95 8GB. Engage 2.0 was kind of like Steam for Symbian phones. Despite its tiny roster, there are some absolutely awesome games on the 2.0 platform, including a unique Metal Gear Solid, a Resident Evil Degeneration game, and the greatest fishing game ever made, Hooked On Creatures of the Deep. Anyway, enough with the history lesson. We're going to set up both types in this video, and the process is a little bit different between them. We're going to do the majority of our work on the PC for ease of use. You could follow the instructions on the device directly, but I don't recommend it. Let's start with the essentials. You can download the emulator EKA201 from the Google Play Store or the official GitHub. I've linked both in the description box below. Once it's installed, open it and allow storage access. Tap Cancel when prompted to install a device. Now we're going to set some settings. Tap Menu and then Settings. Tap Android. You can choose a theme here, I'll stick with light. Now uncheck Enable Action Bar. You can also disable vibration if you like as well. Now go back and tap General. In here you'll find Enable Nearest Neighbor Filtering. This is your preference. With it enabled, your pixels will be crisp and chunky. With it disabled, your games will be more smooth but also kind of blurry. I leave it on because I like the crispy pixels. Close the app completely when you're done. This emulator is a little bit different to those you might be used to. What it does is create an entire emulated Symbian device, complete with all of its apps. This means that the process of loading and starting a game is a little less intuitive than usual. To make it work, we need dumps of the old devices themselves. For the best compatibility, we're going to use the original N-Gage, the QD, and the Express Music 5320. You can find a link to the dumps for these devices below. Go to the Mega folder and click S60 Devices, then Nokia N-Gage. Download the Nokia Engage and Engage QD S60v1.zip file. Now, browse to Nokia Express Music Series and download the 5320 S60v3 FP2.7zip file. Extract the contents of both of these archives somewhere where they're easy to get to. Now, we'll download the Engage 2.0 app. The link to this is also in the description. It's a file named Engage 2.0 v1.40.1557.zip. Extract the .sys file and copy it, along with the 5320 folder we extracted just now, to the Downloads folder on your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. Next, browse to the EKA2L1 folder on your Retroid's internal storage. Copy the Data folder we extracted earlier into this folder. It might take a few minutes. When it's done, you can open the EKA2L1 app and you should now see a list of apps. These are the Engage stock apps. This means that you've successfully added the original Engage devices. Now all we need to do is install the 5320 device for Engage 2.0, which is a different process. In the app itself, tap Menu and then Devices. You'll need two files, a .rom and a .r package, which you can find inside the 5320s60v3 folder we copied over earlier. Tap the ROM button and select the sim.rom file. Now do the same with the .r package file. Tap install and wait a few minutes. When it's done, you can tap the name of the device at the top next to the rename button to see a list of your devices. You should see these three. For now, make sure that Nokia 5320D-1 is selected, since we're going to be focusing on Engage 2.0 first. 
To confirm you have the 5320 device selected, tap back to return to the app list, then look for Jelly Chase and Groove Labyrinth 2 at the bottom of the apps list. If you see them, you're in the right place. Tap the plus icon in the bottom right, then browse to the downloads folder and select the .sys file. After that, you'll find a games app listed with an orange N logo. This is the Engage 2.0 app that we'll use to run our games. Run the app once, enjoy the old school boot animation, then use the R touch button to exit. We can make a shortcut of this app to make our lives easier. Tap and hold on it, then tap create shortcut and add automatically. Now it's in our Android launcher, meaning we don't need to go into the EKA 2L1 app every time we want to open it. For now though, we'll set some settings for Engage 2.0 games. Tap and hold on the games app and tap settings. Set the background to black, the screen orientation to landscape, although note that this won't change the games app itself, that's always portrait, but the games themselves will now default to landscape. Now it's probably a good time to talk about controls. I need to pause here to explain something. Right now in version 1.0.0.8 of the EKA 2L1 app, the input mapping is a little bugged for the Retroid and other controllers. The main two issues are that the left stick and the D-pad are mapped as the same input and that the right stick is not mappable at all. For Engage 2.0, this isn't too much of an issue because it hardly uses any controls, but it makes original Engage games a bit more difficult to set up because every input counts. Thankfully, the Retroid gives us a very neat and easy solution to this problem anyway. We'll get to that a little bit later, just know that the bug is logged and that the developers have marked it as a critical one, so hopefully it will be fixed very soon. For now, we'll move on. Tap key binding to begin setting your controls. Most Engage 2.0 games primarily use a directional pad, L, R, and a function or OK key. Phones also used to have keys for 0 to 9, asterisk, and hash as well though, but it's up to you how you set those up. My recommendation is to minimally set keys for L, R, function, and the directional pad. You don't really need to map any of the other buttons for now, and you can totally ignore the D and C keys, decline and call respectively, which we'll never use. Most 2.0 games work fine with just the D-pad, function, L and R. It may be worth taking a look at the game you want to play and setting it up specifically for that. Unfortunately, with Engage 2.0, we can't set controls on a per-game basis, only for the Games app, which encompasses all of the games. However, most Engage 2.0 games also allow you to remap the controls in their individual settings. We can can also set global profiles and switch between them quickly. In the EKA 2L1 app, go to Menu, then Profiles, to set up different settings or input profiles if you want to. We'll actually revisit this a bit later for the Nokia Engage. One last thing to note in regards to controls. In Landscape Orientation Engage 2.0 games, the L button's function is represented in the top left of the screen, while the R button's function is located on the bottom left. Because of that, I typically set the L button to the L1 and the R button to L2. This just works intuitively to me, but play around with it and see what you prefer. Anyway, you can customize or disable the virtual keyboard here. I'm just going to disable it. You might also notice the checkbox called Touch Input. Some of these friends had touch screens and the games used them too. I just leave it on in case you find a game with touch elements that you want to play. All right, we're ready to add some games. Close the EKA 2L1 app completely. 2.0 games come in a .engage format. We need to copy the .engage files directly into the emulated 5320 storage. I recommend only doing a handful of games at once and you'll see why. Browse to the Retroid's EKA 2L1 folder, then go into Data, which houses the device files, tap Drives, and then the E folder. If the E folder doesn't exist, try reconnecting your Retroid and it should appear. Inside, you'll find a folder named Engage. Copy your .engage files into this folder. You'll need to add additional games to this folder to install them in the future, so remember where it is. EKA 2L1, Data, Drives, E, then Engage. Now open the Games app. This part is kind of odd. If you just copied one game, it will say preparing installation and then we'll begin to install the game automatically and then you're good to go. You can then copy another game using the same folders as before, reopen the app and the same will happen again. However, if you copied multiple .engage files, it'll freeze after saying preparing installation. What you need to do here is exit the app and reopen it as many times as games you added to the folder, waiting each time for preparing installation to disappear. So if you added five games, you'll open and close the games app five times. Eventually, they'll finally all show up faded in the games app. You can now highlight a game, hit L for options, and L again on install game to install it. All these installations are a little slow by today's standards, so just be patient. Also note, the original .engage file that you copied will be deleted after installation, so be sure to keep a backup. With your game installed, highlight it, and then press L, start game, or simply the function OK key that you mapped to start the game. Then be patient again. This emulator takes a while to get into a gear the first time you launch a game. It might look like it's frozen or glitched, but just be patient. It'll be faster for subsequent launches. 
if it does actually freeze, say it's been a couple minutes or so, just close the app and try again and you'll probably find it launches straight away. Remember, the L button is represented in the top left of the screen and the R button is represented in the bottom left for landscape games. And there we go! Engage 2.0 games are good to go. Unfortunately, you can't add shortcuts for the individual games to Android for the 2.0 app, only the app itself. But once set up, it's quick and easy to get into a game from here. Just browse to the second tab to see all your games. Alright, there's one more optional step we can take to make our lives a little bit easier for Engage 2.0. Open the EKA2L1 folder on your Retroid storage. Then browse to Data, Drives, E, Private, and then the 20003B78 folder. Inside this folder, you're going to find a .3GP file. This file is the Engage 2.0 app's boot animation. You can delete this file, and now every time you open the Engage 2.0 app, you'll jump right in instead of having to watch that animation over and over. Alright, that was kind of a lot. Take a breather and we'll move on to the original Engage games. Original Engage games are easy to add to the emulator and come with the added bonus of working as shortcuts in your Android launcher. On the other hand, Engage games used up to a whopping 20 or so buttons that need to be mapped. For now, we're going to do some prep work. In EKA 2L1, go to Menu, then Devices, and select Nokia Engage. Tap back to return to the app list. Now tap Menu and Profiles. Here we can set global configuration files for the emulator. This is helpful for original Engage games because it means you only need to configure it once and your settings won't override the ones we already set for the 2.0 app. Tap the plus icon and name your profile, then tap OK. Under screen options, set the background to black, screen orientation to default, and scale type to fit to window. Original Engage games had a slightly vertical orientation so stretching the display doesn't really work here. On the bright side, this does give us some space for on-screen buttons if we need them, which we most likely will. For key bindings, the 5 and 7 keys on the end gauge were particularly important and functioned as the primary keys for most games. With the bug I mentioned before, it's hard to map all the other keys physically. I'd recommend mapping the D-pad, 5, 7, L, R, and a function or OK button at least. For the rest of the controls, we can use the Retroid on-screen control mapper to easily map whichever 1 to 9 keys we like to the touchscreen. I will show you how to do this after we add some games. Each game uses different keys in different ways. Elder Scrolls, for example, uses nearly every key on the end gauge to varying importance. SSX uses every single number key to perform different tricks. This will really be up to you and each game. The main takeaway here though is that 5 and 7 are the most important, and that some touch buttons may be needed. When you're ready, go back, then tap the profile and set it as default. Then close the EKA 2L1 app completely. Now we'll finally add some games. Engage games will come as a folder named System. All you need to do is paste that system folder over the existing system folder in the emulator's E drive folder. That's the same one we used before for Engage 2.0. Browse to the EKA 2L1 folder, Data, Drives, then E, then copy your game's System and Libs folder here. Overwrite and combine any existing folders when prompted. Now open EKA 2L1 and your games should be listed in the app list. You can now long press them to add a shortcut to the home screen or configure individual settings per app. Or of course, tap the game to open it. And here you can see the Elder Scrolls Travel Shadow Key is working just fine. However, as I mentioned before, there are some control issues due to the number of controls that this game uses. So now we're going to set up some on-screen controls and then map them to the right stick to make this game easier to play. I've made my on-screen buttons colourful so that you can see what I'm doing, but yours will be translucent to begin with and we can make them transparent later on. The first thing to do is to disable all the on-screen buttons for each control that we've already mapped to the Retroid. Whilst in-game, tap back then hide buttons, and disable all the buttons you have mapped. In my case for Shadow Key, I've hidden everything but 2, 4, 6, and 8. Tap back again, then tap the Key Layout Resize mode. Tap on the on-screen buttons and they'll turn blue. Then swipe slowly downwards on the screen to scale it down until it doesn't obstruct the game area. Tap back, then Finish Edit mode. Now, swipe in from the right to reveal the Retroid's control window. Tap the Key Adapter button. The third icon here is the right stick, so tap and slide down from that button to reveal a circle with some arrows and an R. Tap on the down arrow and pull up slowly to resize the circle, shrinking it down until it's around the same size as the emulator's on-screen buttons. The arrow should line up with the button centrally. When it's positioned something that looks like this, tap the blue OK button. Now your right stick will activate those on-screen buttons like this. For Elder Scrolls Shadow Key, this is practically an ideal setup 
because now the right stick acts as your pitch and strafe controls. Again, this varies from game to game. You may end up using the on-screen buttons and the stick for the entire number pad. EKA 2L1's on-screen controls are very, very flexible. You can even arrange them specifically to your liking. One last thing, you can go into your setting profile and set the on-screen button opacity to zero to hide them while still keeping them functional. I know that's kind of complicated, but you really need to understand that the N-Gage had a very unique control system with so many buttons it's almost ridiculous. Thankfully, using the Retroid control mapper, we can mitigate the worst of these controls and make most of these games very playable. And well, that about finishes up this tutorial. You can now play a variety of interesting games for these very overlooked devices. I'd like to give you a list of a few games to try out on each platform, but this isn't an exhaustive list and there are plenty of great games available. For the original Engage, I recommend checking out Pathway to Glory, a dark, gritty tactics game, Requiem of Hell, a Diablo-style game with an interesting story and painful difficulty level, Pocket Kingdom Own the World, which is a fourth wall-breaking MMO which can still be played offline, SSX Out of Bounds, a really cool port of the SSX core mechanics in a teeny tiny form factor, and of course the Elder Scrolls Travel Shadow Key, a fully open-world 3D Elder Scrolls RPG. Just amazing. Now for Engage 2.0, I recommend Metal Gear Solid Mobile, which has an interesting mix of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 with a unique stealth camo mechanic. Resident Evil Degeneration, a complete port of Resident Evil 4 mechanics in a really cool mobile game based on the movie. Star Wars The Force Unleashed, a QTE game with some of the nicest pre-rendered backgrounds I've ever seen. Dirk Dagger and the Fallen Idol, a film noir point-and-click adventure similar to Broken Sword. And finally, of course, Hooked On Creatures of the Deep, which is quite simply the most enjoyable fishing game ever made, with some absolutely lovely graphics. And there was one more point for me to address. Where exactly do you get these games? And this is a controversial point. We all know the grey area that is emulation, and ultimately I have to make the decision here. In my opinion, these games and systems are essentially abandonware at this point. They're never going to be remade, re-released, remastered, or revived in any way. With this in mind, I've included links in the description to download archives for each of the platforms. I truly believe these systems and games deserve a retrospective look, and I really hope you enjoy rediscovering them as much as I have. And that about wraps it up. Thanks very much for watching Retro Breeze. Feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you have any trouble setting this up, let me know and I'll do my best to help. Let me know which of these games you play, which you like, and I'll see you next time.